So recent changes in the world have accelerated the digitalization of society and the way we are trending. On one hand, we have the brick and mortar stores who are really struggling, places like Macy's and JCPenney's who are letting people off, putting people on leave, and their stock prices are plummeting. Macy's has even shut 125 stores this year before the effect of this pandemic. On the other hand, Jeff Bezos once again has found himself in the winner's seat. In a recent survey, 55% of Americans said they're doing their grocery shopping online, and of that 55 5%, of those people, 108 million Americans, are using Amazon or an Amazon company to get their groceries. So where all other businesses are really struggling at the moment, letting employees go and their stocks are just declining, Amazon stocks are up 28% this year. In the last two months, they've hired an extra 175,000 employees, and very recently, they've done something that probably no company has ever done before. They're actually trying to slow down how many sales they get through this period because the demand is too high for them to deal with. So the year is 1994, and Jeff Bezos is just 30 years old, and he's working on Wall Street. He hears this one statistic, this one trend that makes him quit his job, move out to Seattle, and start Amazon. That statistic was that web usage in the spring of 1994 was growing at 2300% a year. And he said that things just don't grow that fast. So he knew this was something special and basically asked himself the question, what kind of business plan might make sense in the context of that growth. Similar to the way Walmart created a superstore and started to really hurt the old mom and pop corner stores who only specialized in a certain amount of products, Jeff Bezos had the genius idea to ride the trend of these superstores but make them available online. But of course he knew he couldn't conquer Rome in a day and had to start with one thing. Everybody knows that Jeff Bezos started to get his foot in the door with books. Why? Because they have one, universal demand, and two, they're very cheap to start with. Since then, Amazon have been rapidly expanding their categories that they sell in until they've become the dominating force that they are today. If you didn't notice the pattern, this is exactly what we do as Amazon FBA sellers, or at least the ones who do it properly. They find a long-term sustainable upwards trend, such as Jeff finding this web usage statistic and everybody gravitating towards the internet. And then he built an incredible product, which became Amazon, to fulfill that growing need. Check out the trend of protein powder, for example. Since 2004, it has almost 10 x in demand and it's going up sustainably over time, just like web usage. You can see here people selling protein powder on Amazon such as this, Orgain Organic Protein. They've made a high quality product that people like and people keep returning back to and they've made a lot of money from it. How much money exactly are they making? We're gonna hit our Helium 10 X-ray tool to see that this niche, this market is doing over $10 million of revenue every single month. Also, if you've been hanging out on getting Helium 10, they're doing a pandemic special 80% off their monthly recurring price. We link our link up in the description so you can get that. If you've been waiting around, I've never seen them do this before. I strongly believe in Helium 10, so make sure you grab the 80% off link because it is a crazy deal at the moment. So that brings us to right now. Today, while you're watching this video, we're at the top of that trend, the most web usage of all time as people are locked at home. This demand is something that Amazon could not have ever predicted and actually don't want. So I want to jump into the four very interesting ways that Amazon are trying to slow down getting sales through their website. So Amazon are a ridiculously smart company and they spend billions of dollars every single year on trying to get you to buy more. And now we have first-hand knowledge at what is actually working for them to get people to buy more by looking at what functionalities they've removed from their website in order to slow down the sale. First thing that they've done is radically change their homepage, where you normally log on to Amazon and you can see items you've recently browsed but haven't actually purchased. You look at related items, related physical products to things that you've been shopping for. They have relevant category suggestions such as rain jackets in the winter time or beach balls in the summertime. These are all now fully gone. All of the physical product recommendations on their homepage don't actually exist. Instead, what they're recommending is digital products, things they don't need to store in a warehouse or physically ship out to you. 
things like Amazon Prime Movies. What movies do you want to digitally download and purchase today? Or Kindle Books. Do you have a Kindle e-reader? They're going to be able to deliver those to you without using their warehouses, without having to use their manpower. This wasn't enough to slow Amazon sales though. Their fulfillment centers are still extremely stressed by the demand and Amazon made the move to cut out their deals page because obviously people are incentivized to buy more if things are on sale, if things are being highlighted as a special limited time deal, they're gonna have more people acting upon that and more people buying that, and therefore that's gonna stress their fulfillment centers out even more. So you can see the difference here on the Amazon search bar is that before this demand started, there was a link straight to the Amazon deals page. However, now this link doesn't exist. The next move Amazon made is very interesting. They removed a feature that they introduced that radically increase their profitability. It's the customers also bought feature, which is where you go to an Amazon product page and you scroll down a little bit below the photo and it will show you what items are most purchased together with this item that you're viewing. This increases the cart value of the average shopper and makes Amazon a lot of extra profit normally. However, they're not looking for profit. They're trying to reduce sales and reduce the stress on their warehouses so they can get back to a sustainable growth curve. And lastly, if all this wasn't enough, Amazon made a drastic move to stop the creation of new coupon codes. Because once again, the more percentage off a person gets of a product, the more they're gonna buy for it. When normally they're prioritizing the lowest prices possible, they're actually preventing sellers like me and you from creating these coupons now because they just can't handle the demand that that's gonna bring. Amazon say, to help our teams prioritize products that customers need most at this time, we are not currently accepting new coupons. So what does this mean for us as sellers? How do we capitalize on this all-time demand on Amazon, especially if you're not currently selling there or you can't get your product back into stock? So the answer to this question is very important and something that 90% of sellers miss. And this is why literally 95% of e-commerce business and 95% of Amazon businesses go out of business because they don't understand this thing that Amazon have done so well. This, once again, you'll see it in almost every one of my videos, is Amazon's revenue, Amazon's growth uh, financially over time. You can see these are the years on the bottom. This is since 2007 down here, um, all the way up to 2019, quarter four. But you can see their growth goes over the long term. You can see every fourth quarter is their highest quarter and it never has gone backwards. All the way up to here, this is the fourth quarter of 2017 where they did 60 billion dollars of revenue now back here everyone thought it was too late everyone's like wow look at this growth right here they're already at all-time highs there's nothing really we can do to tap into the crazy growth that's going on right now however let's time travel a little bit to the present day it grew a ridiculous amount in just a couple of years in two years it went from uh, what is it just over 60 billion dollars in the fourth quarter to 87 billion dollars in the fourth quarter last year and now we're in quarter one of 2020 and it's at the all-time high this growth is the actual rate that amazon could sustain this is where the all their fulfillment centers and everything was acting as normal however quarter one which is right here it's at we don't know how big this level is but it's at a point that this is not actually sustainable it could be up here it could be all the way up here we don't know yet but here's the thing we are not, and if you are, you're doing something wrong. If you are trying to capitalize off their exact uh, demand right now, you're doing it wrong. It's like going back to 2017 and being like, how do I make money in the next three months? What you have to understand is when Jeff Bezos saw that the internet web usage was growing at 2300% per year back in 1994, he wasn't like, okay, cool, by the end of 1995, I wanna make a billion dollars of this massive usage. What he did, he did what Amazon does so well and puts him ahead of every other company out there, is he looked for the long term. He looked forward 100 years. He has a saying, it is always day one at Amazon and he's always looking for the future. Therefore, what we must do to be successful as FBA sellers is look further than our competitors are looking and have a really high quality product as well, but that's for a different video. So the demand 
after this pandemic will probably come back down. But what happens is all the people, let's get another color going guys. How about a nice green? All the people who joined Amazon and are spending more and more money on Amazon, they're realizing that this trend is unstoppable and we've only sped up the acceleration of the digitalized, digitalization, it's a really hard word to say, um, of society. And maybe 20% of these people who are now shopping start consistently shopping on Amazon after this quarter, after this pandemic is over. And therefore, this graph is only just beginning. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's going to be the same amount of growth from 2013 to now over the next seven years. And because we're actually on an exponential graph, it's going to be more. So right now, you need to, one, get extremely educated on if Amazon FBA or e-commerce is right for you. Read books, take YouTube videos like you're doing now. Well done for finding this channel. This is a great resource. I have nothing to sell you. I don't, except for Helium 10, which is a great software that I personally pay for uh, to launch my business. I don't have a course. I don't have a vested interest in whatever you do on Amazon. I just want to share how the winning strategies are actually put out there and implemented in the real world. And all I ask for that in return is a like and a subscribe. So make sure you get educated. You make sure you're looking long term and you're investing in a sustainable trend where Amazon is a long term sustainable trend or it's one of the best bets you can make. You need to look at a niche that's sustainable within that sustainable trend, whether that be something like protein powder, but definitely don't go into, say, the niche of DVDs or CD players because that trend is going down. Find something like Jeff did that's going up over the long term and make sure you're looking long term to get ahead of your competitors.